Welcome back to the Sound for More channel. It's Leo speaking today. I'm going to introduce you to recording pattern and uh, I'm going to introduce you to the step sequencer. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. We are inside Logic Pro for iPad and we are running on an iPad Pro M1. Let's click on create project and then select tracks. Okay. So as you can see, we have an option here for pattern. Let's click on the three dots to see the additional option, but these are the standard one. You can enable an external MIDI controller, select a patching instrument, which we have already seen in many other tutorials, and you can have the browser open or not. Let's click back and let's select a pattern. Now you are presented with this view where you have the editor open for the step sequencer and also for the pattern region. And then underneath you have the plugin um, editor as well where you can see there is there are no instrument associated or there is no instrument associated with the particular track if i close both editors you can see it is a software instrument track and if you go to the inspector you can see that the default region type is of pattern okay so let's open the browser here let's expand on pattern it says there are no patterns because you need to open the step sequencer to browse patterns so let's click on the editor and now you have different categories of patterns for example let's open up base let's click on ancient acid and now it will load a pattern in your step editor if you click, uh, press play you will not hear any sound because there is no instrument associated with that particular track. Indeed, if I go back up and I go to instrument and then I select uh, bass as a filter and I select that acid house bass, which is loaded. Now I press play. And now it will play um, this particular pattern region, which come from the pattern which are already loaded and it will use this instrument acid house Base to play all the different step. Also, uh, note that you have different rows here, and each row has a different note. C two, G one, E one, etc., etc. And I will explain all of these in a moment, but just remember that. Now, let's go um, back out. Actually, let's go back in. Let's remove the filter, and um, let's select uh, a drum machine designer as an instrument plugin here as a filter as you can see there now you can drag and drop one of these directly on the track and what it will do it will uh, drag um, a drum machine designer instrument patch onto this track which works really well um, associated with the step sequencer you can see now for each of the row inside the step sequencer you have drum kit pieces okay which is really really nice oh, of course and if uh, um let's close for now the uh browser if um if you select that track and um, you go to plugin editors at the moment um, you see uh, only the compression the overdrive because you need to go selection here and choose a row which is inside that of drum machine designer and in this case you can see the quick sampler and um, and i explained all of these in the previous tutorial for the drum machine designer Okay, let's um, close this and let's uh, press uh, undo, undo until we go back to what we had uh, earlier on with the acid house base. Okay, so you don't, of course, need to, to use that. You can load an instrument as uh, you prefer. Indeed, let's remove that. Let's go back again to remove the pattern which we have loaded. Let's go to the plugin editor, click on instrument, and then, for example, choose one. And now you can create uh, steps inside your step sequencer, and they are played by this instrument, okay, which we just selected. Now let's close that plugin editor. Okay. So we have this um, uh, region. Let's move it right at the beginning. It is uh, um, the length is four bars. So let's enable also the cycle so that when it, uh, I click play at the project level, it will actually go on a cycle. Why am I saying that? Or why am I doing that? Because if I create some step like so, I can click on play here for the project and it will play it, right? <laughs> Boop, boop, boop. 
And when it goes to the end of the cycle, it will uh, uh, recommence, and at the end of each bar, it will repeat the pattern which is recorded here. So this is one way to actually play your pattern, but you can also use this button here for preview, which will not trigger playing at project level for all tracks, but just for this particular pattern. It's almost like an audition in your pattern. <laughs> And that is quite nice because you can uh, quickly see what you are working with and if you need to uh, change it. Next, we have live recording. If you click and hold, you have the selection to live record velocity, note length and quantize as well, up to you in terms of your choice. You can also uh, reach to those options going on the three dots here and select live record at the bottom. Okay. Next, so what does it mean doing live recording? Well, let's click on it, then let's activate a play surface. Now let's click on preview and let's play with the live surface. Okay, let's stop. Let's uh, um, disable the play surface. And as you can see, it is recording notes as I played and um, is using some of the features internal, internally to the step sequencer to, for example, tie different steps together. It might also use, uh, for example, a note or step of sets to ensure that everything is aligned in terms of quantization. And then depending on the note that I pressed is actually putting the corresponding step here for the right row, which uh, uh, is represented by the different note which is being played. Okay, that is your live recording and that works really nicely. So you can go back or you can uh, click here on the X and you get rid of all the different steps. What you notice is that you don't get rid of these steps which have been joined up together. So if you click here where it says die and then um, delete again, it will remove those. But I will explain that in a moment. Next here you have input for input node. This is where you can actually do your um, step, um, step recording. So you can go back here to the um, play surface and press. And it will go to the next step every time you press on a note and it will find that note on the right row and add that step. That is your step recording. Now, I should say also that um, inside a step sequencer, you can have tracks related to notes, but also to automation. Indeed, if you click on the plus sign here to add rows, you can add notes and you can choose your notes, which will be a fixed pitch per row or melodic when you use multiple pitches, but you can change that later anyway. And you can do automation. And here you can choose different type of automation that you want to record. And it works in a similar way. So for example, if you're doing live recording, you just press preview, you have live recording on, and then you change the part, some of the controls and you record your automation. You can also do um, learn, learn for adding new rows in case, for example, that I'm uh, playing some notes which are not represented by one of the rows here, it will add a, a row automatically. Or if I select the track and uh, click learn assign, it will change the assignment of that track based on what I pressed for example it could be that i pressed a, um, a different note or a different automation parameter okay so different option to actually create additional row and assign additional rows this is the icon for MIDI output uh, so that uh, it will play against that instrument that you played and this is for monophonic or no so if monophonic is active and um, you can only record one step on uh, the same vertical position. If this is off, you can record multiple steps on the same vertical position. Again, let's clear everything. Now, where you see this dot, these are pages. So you see this control at the moment here, click on it, you see different control again. The same here, you can uh, go into the next page for this type of control and get to the next page and then back to the first page highlighted by these dots. And of course, you can see the different option changing. Now, on the first page here, we have on and off, which is about turning on and off steps, which is really straightforward. And I should say that as you change parameters uh, or function, edit a button, edit function, 
It will change here as well. You can see the description here and also the representation on the steps as well. So the second one is a velocity value. Click and hold and you can change up and down the velocity of the uh, step. Of course, you need to have some step active like so. Okay, that is how you change uh, the uh, velocity. Next, we have a gate. So how long the gate is open for the particular step. Really straightforward. Next is to tie in notes. So you click here, it will uh, join the next one. Click here, we'll join back this one. Okay. And then you can do different options. So just play with it. It's really nice. Next uh, is about note. It will change the note. And indeed, you can see also that here it changed the description from the note to melodic because you have different pitches. So it's not a fixed pitch. Okay. Let's go back, back again back again until uh, we are back here and um, let's clear here so um, we don't have uh, anything on time okay then finally we have octave you can change the octave um, for uh, each of the step and this is your selection tool next we have uh, um, auto vertical scroll which will change the height here on uh, the rows to ensure that um, you have the better visibility. Of course, you can have it off as well. Next, we have free dot for additional option. You have patterns. You can show patterns uh, from the browser, uh, like so. And you can show, um, save the pattern, save save also a template, which is really nice. You can create your own template. You can create a, a template for the track. You can sort roads by sort type, by note, by name, direction, ascending and descending. You can have zoom focused on the row and then you can display edit mode values always for the selected row or for all rows or only when editing values depending on your preference and then you can set the step color by row or by region and then the option of live recording which we have already seen okay let's zoom this back up let's move um, to the next page here so we have repeat, so you can decide how many times you repeat this particular step. And if you click and hold, it will open up the particular row so you have vis better visibility, so you can let go as well from your mouse. Let's click uh, uh, preview. You can hear that he's repeating that. And then of course, you can go back to one. Next is loop, you can start, um, you can decide the beginning and the end of the loop. Like so, you can have different looping. So per row, so it becomes really interesting. Next, you can set the chance or probability of notes being played, like so, really nice the visual. Next, we can decide the offset. Offset per um, step in terms of giving an offset before it's being played, which is good. It's used for quantization, for example. Next, you have rate, the duration of the particular step, right? And really, really nice. And then you have skip. If you press on uh, a particular step, you will skip that step, i.e. will not be played. As you can see, it didn't play this particular step. Okay, let's go back now. Okay, uh, at some level, like, uh, for example, uh, this level here, um, actually, I go back again like these and delete everything okay perfect so let's move on here you can create a new track as i mentioned to notes and automation and you can do learn and add and assign you can randomize the entire pattern depending on what you have selected here this moment is for octave but if i go back to on and off and i randomize it will randomize four steps really nice and of course i can delete everything there here you have different pages as i mentioned like so, the name of the instrument. Here you have the key, which you can change. You have the scale, you can set a scale, uh, really nice. And of course, you can change the length of uh, the pattern in terms of steps. Next, you have three dots here. Click on it, you can transpose up and down by semitone, up and down by an octave, and also transpose to the project key, which you set up here. Okay, so let's go through each row. 
At the moment, they're all set to melodic because um, there are different pitches, but they don't have to be um, like so. Of course, you can expand each row and you can see different selector for note, octave, velocity, gate, and tie, which we have already seen up here. And you can click on one and on the three dots, you can add the sub row or you can remove it as well. And here is where you can delete everything or randomize as well. And the same for all the other rows. So let's close this. You can mute, you can solo, you can randomize and you can delete everything only for that row and here you have of course the image of the icon but if you click on it you can copy delete duplicate randomize the step on and off you can set it on and off edit the road name and clear the row as well okay let's move on to the next page here you can set the direction it can be forward reverse ping pong or random really nice let's do ping pong so <laughs> And you can see the first row is going in ping pong mode, so forward and backwards, really nice. You can set the uh, rate for the step, okay, let's so if you want it to go faster, like so. Next you can set the MIDI channel, which is really nice, always useful. Next you can set for automation if you want the step or a smooth transition. Okay, next uh, you next page here yeah, you can shift them left, right, and then depending on what you have selected, you can change the configuration up and down. So for example, if I was on notes and I go up, it will go up by semitones. Really nice, but it depends what you have selected. Okay, so um, that is... Um, how you work with the step sequencer and that is how you create pattern. I hope you found the introduction useful. I might create an additional tutorial to show you how to record, for example, automation directly inside the step sequencer. Okay, see you next time. Bye.